Hi everyone, I'm Tommy Hamilton. I'm an app platform SSP here at Red Hat. And today I'm really excited to uh, show you a quick demo. I'm joined by Martez Reed from River Meadow. Martez? Yeah, pleasure to have everyone on board. My name is Martez Reed, VP of Field Solutions with River Meadow. Awesome. So one of the things that we notice working with customers is this trend where customers move VMs into the cloud and they're very happy with the cloud, but then they start to notice that the run rate of those VMs moving from on-prem into the cloud, uh, it, it starts going out of control. And so now they're looking at cloud cost avoidance, right sizing, et cetera. Well, one of the big reasons why we see customers uh, experience this uh, cloud cost ballooning is because on-prem they're doing hardware overcommit, and in the cloud they lose that ability. So on-prem, you know, they might run uh, 400 vCPUs worth of VMs on 100 vCPUs worth of hardware, but then when they move those into the cloud, they're paying the cloud provider for 400 vCPUs, even though they're not using it. And so one of the really nice things that we can do with Vert on Rosa is that we can actually take those VMs and using the bare metal instances provided by AWS, do hardware overcommit just like you're doing on-prem in VMware, but now inside of the cloud. And so one of the big challenges that customers face to, to take advantage of this is how do you actually go from an EC2 instance to something that can run inside of Rosa? And that's where we wanted to talk about River Meadow today, because it's a great tool. Uh, it's a very turnkey solution for being able to simply import those EC2 instances directly from AWS Native into Vert on Rosa. So with that, Martez, do you want to talk a little bit about River Meadow? Yeah, absolutely. So River Meadow is a workload mobility platform that enables the migration, optimization, and modernization of workloads from any source, whether it be VMware, public cloud, bare metal, onto over the dozen supported targets that the platform supports, i.e. Red Hat OpenShift virtualization on AWS, on Azure, as well as even in on-prem estates to be able to allow customers to be, have that flexibility to be able to migrate off of those various other environments onto Red Hat OpenShift to be able to drive that additional value for customers, particularly in this case, when we talk about that ability to be able to overcommit. Yeah, absolutely. So what I have here is the River Meadow platform. Um, this is a, a, a great uh, web UI platform that River Meadow has provided. We've already synced uh, the, the agents between our OpenShift cluster, our Rosa cluster, and River Meadow. And so now we have uh, three VMs. One is a, a Windows VM, and then we have two Linux VMs here. Uh, and so I guess, Martez, can you just walk me through how I would uh, go about importing one of these EC2 instances? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of ways that that can be done through the Remoto platform. So in this case of taking a workload off of native EC2, we're going to utilize our agent-based or OS-based migration capability to be able to facilitate those migrations. And so what we've done here is we've installed the River Meadow agent, very lightweight, minimal resources required, doesn't require a reboot, and doesn't ever impact the source workload as it continues to run. So once we've done that agent installation, we're now able to add those systems into the environment. So in this case, we would go into add source in the UI, to be able to specify those particular configurations. And they would pop that in. Additionally, we could also add them in bulk via our CSV import capability. And then finally, via the REST API. So in this case, we've already added those in. And so tell me what we can do is we can click on one of the clouds to be able to actually start the migration process. So what we now have here is that we've specified our target cloud environment. And so what we've done is we've specified the OpenShift cluster. We've added it into the environment. What we did was we deployed a lightweight virtual machine into our OpenShift virtualization cluster on AWS, our ROSA cluster, to be able to facilitate and get things set up. And so now that we've got our migration appliance, we've got our agents installed, we can ready to start to the actual migration process. Perfect. So we, what we're doing now is we're running through a battery of checks to be able to perform validation and provide insights into whether we believe there will be issues with actually migrating this workload from the source to the target. In this case, everything's come back clear in terms of on the target side. So this is a major value of the Rivermental platform. When you start to think about actually orchestrating and operating migrations at scale. So it's one thing if a workload fails when you're migrating one or two of them two VMs, when you start to talk about hundreds or thousands of VMs, being able to migrate those at scale with assurance is absolutely critical. Yep. So now everything looks good from a readiness perspective. So we can click Create Migration Profile. And so what we're actually going to start doing is essentially the migration profile is our plan for how we want to migrate this workload from EC2 
could be any of the other various public clouds, as well as on-premise states that we want to utilize as our source. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify what we want that configuration to look like for the workload as it lands in our Red Hat OpenShift on AWS cluster. All right, so I'm, I'm just gonna call this EC2 instance two, and I'm gonna uh, select the project inside of our Rosa cluster. Uh, I'm gonna give this 32 cores, uh, because it's gonna be pretty busy. Uh, select my storage class, and then I think next I just need to select the pod network, yep. and then we'll click continue. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go through another pre-flight checklist. Yep, so all things uh, validation and insurance to try and ensure that when you start a process that could potentially take hours, you're not gonna run into an issue midway through the process. So we can click Start Migration. All it's right, gonna perfect. pick up the process to start migrating that workload, in this case from EC2 into our Red Hat OpenShift on AWS cluster. Awesome. Now, one of the other things that I want to point out is we've actually already done two migrations. So, you know, here, you know, again, this is the, the server 2016 Windows box that we migrated. Um, if I come in here and hit this uh, I button, we can see all the information about the EC2 instance before and after it was migrated. We can also take uh, take a look at how long the total migration took. It looks like it took about uh, 19, 20 minutes. Uh, and then also here is uh, a Linux-based EC2 instance that we just migrated. It only took six minutes, so that's pretty nice. Um, so now let's flip over to OpenShift on Rosa and take a look at what we see there. So here, as I mentioned before, we do have those uh, VMs that we've already migrated. So here's the, the appliance box that Martez was talking about. Here we have that server 2016 box, and here's EC2 instance one that we migrated just earlier. And one of the things that I want to take a look at is if we drill in here, we'll see that uh, this VM is assigned 32 vCPUs. And then if we go into EC2 instance one, we see that this also is assigned 32 vCPUs. And then if we go into EC2 instance two, we see that this is also assigned 32 vCPUs. So we have 96 vCPUs worth of VMs provisioned running on the server. So you would expect that underneath we have 96 vCPUs of hardware. Not exactly. Let's go to the overview tab. And then here you can see our uh, cluster inventory. We have four nodes. All of these VMs are actually running on our bare metal instance. It's an M5ZN metal server. And we see that it only has 48 cores. And so again, Think about how many VMs you have deployed. Think about how many vCPUs you've assigned, and then think about what the average utilization 24-7, 365 is. Here, we have 96 vCPUs of VMs running on only 48 uh, actual um, uh, vCPUs, and we can see here that we're only utilizing 3.6 of them. And so, again, this is just going to show that using this technology, we could very significantly reduce your overall uh, infrastructure footprint and basically only provision what you actually need for those VMs, allow you to overcommit, overassign more vCPUs and more RAM than you're actually utilizing, um, and, and then be able to significantly reduce your cloud spend. We're seeing customers that are looking at reducing their overall uh, EC2 infrastructure spend by 40, 50, even 75%. So, you know, we're really excited about how this can help our customers be able to optimize those cloud costs. Um, let's flip over here. And uh, yeah, it looks like EC2 instance two is already up and running. Uh, there will probably be some more migration steps, uh, but we, what we saw before was that it took about seven minutes. Uh, Martez uh, really can't say enough. This is a really, really cool product. We're very excited about how this could uh, help our customers save a bunch of money. Um, from what I understand, we have the ability to offer a no or low cost pilot uh, if customers are interested. Uh, that includes the use of the uh, River Meadow tool uh, and also the use of the Rosa platform. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So River Meadow is part of AWS's ISV migration tooling program, which also includes support for workloads landing on Rosa. And so the program really focuses on being able to land new workloads into AWS, whether it be EC2 or Red Hat OpenShift on AWS, Rosa in this case, at zero cost to the customer, utilizing funding provided by AWS. Um, and so it's a major capability that River Meadow commonly engages with in customers to be able to leverage the River Meadow platform, to be able to migrate workloads at speed, at scale, 
from various different environments into the AWS ecosystem. Perfect. So if you're in a situation where you're looking for creative ways to reduce your overall cloud spend, and if you're interested in doing a no or low cost pilot of what you just saw with the with the hardware overcommit, definitely reach out to River Meadow, reach out to your Red Hat account team. We'd be very happy to help you learn more. Uh, Martez, thanks so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, everyone. See ya. Thank you.